How's it going guys? This is Twister and today I'm back with another GTA Online video and that's two videos in two days which is something I haven't done in ages and in this video I'm going to be attempting to answer a question that I get asked so much and it's not really just me, it's something that I just see being asked a ton still. I feel like this is just one of those age old questions, it was probably around back when Jesus was alive and it is what is the best way to make money in GTA Online? And the shortest answer I can give to that is play the game. Seriously, just play the game. GTA Online has changed so much from what it used to be that there's loads of stuff you can do, there's loads of things to play, loads of different types of jobs and activities you can do to make money in the game. It's not like it was before when I've made videos about this in the past and it was literally just play this one race and you'll make a ton of money or play this one mission over and over again and you'll make a ton of money. Shout out to Rooftop Rumble back in the day, that was like the OG strategy, or even before that when I used to do down the drain all the time. It's not like that anymore, it's not just one way that you can just do over and over again to make loads of money in GTA Online. If you just play the game normally and take advantage of all the different activities that the game has to offer, you'll earn money and it's pretty simple to do that. So I'm not just going to end the video off there, I am going to talk about some of the different modes and some of the activities that I do uh, and some of the stuff that you can do as well. But there honestly isn't just one specific way uh, just to make money in the game. I personally just like to play a bit of everything so I think I'll probably start off with adversary modes simply because we just got a new adversary mode the other day which is Kill Quota and we've been getting a lot of adversary modes recently. It's just like Rockstar's favourite thing to do in the game is just pump out a couple of adversary modes every single update and because there's a load of different adversary modes, there's a lot of variety, and the payouts for pretty much all adversary modes got improved a little while ago, so they are pretty decent for earning money, especially uh, the round-based ones where the rounds actually last quite a bit of time, like specifically something like Entourage, that was so good when that came out, and then even uh, Lost vs. Damned, the rounds can last quite a while in that game. And then the latest adversary mode as well, Kill Quota, which I did a video on yesterday, it's pretty much gun game. It's a lot of fun and you can earn a lot of money just by playing it, especially right now when it's double money. Pretty much this goes for anything, whatever whatever game mode is double money during whatever the event week is when you're watching this video. Right now, because there's a new adversary mode that's just come out, uh, the Kill Quota gun game mode, that is currently double money in the game, so right now that is definitely one of the best ways just to earn money just playing through uh, the adversary mode. It's definitely a decent place to start, and in my opinion, the best way to make money is not always the one that's going to make you the most money in a certain amount of time. It's something that's got to be at least enjoyable to play as well. If you're just doing one thing over and over again and you're not finding it fun, then it's probably not the best thing to do. Like I said, just play a variety of different stuff, but adversary modes and whatever it is currently that's double money in the event week, that's definitely a good place to start. Now next up we've got CEO work and the biker businesses. I'm not going to go too much into detail about specific values of how much money you'll be able to make in a certain amount of time. I have already made a video on this previously, actually comparing the two, uh, CEO work and actually doing the warehouses compared to uh, the biker businesses. And when I compared the two, I came to the conclusion that if you could only do one, then the CEO work is probably the single best way to make money because you can just absolutely speed through the... Um, warehouse missions and filling up the warehouse by actually getting all the crates. But I also said that the best way to utilize the two whilst in a free mode session is to make sure that all your supplies for your biker businesses are full, then switch over to being a CEO and doing the CEO missions with the crates to fill up a warehouse. And at the same time, as you get the crates to fill up a warehouse and your warehouse value is increasing, you'll also be producing product for your biker businesses. So your biker business value will be also increasing at the same time, so you're really just getting the most out of the two. And this is just something you've really got to grind away at inside a Freemo session to get the most out of it. But if you have a few hours and that's what you just want to do, then you can go ahead like 700k for a, a medium CEO warehouse, whilst at the same time you might have your coke factory that's making its way up to that 420k value, or a weed farm that's making its way up to a 300k value. When you get around to selling them all, that's a lot of money, so that's what I'd recommend when it comes to the CEO work and the biker businesses. Now next up, on to heists. This is something that I think some people just may not realise how good heists still are for making money. 
I know we've had a ton of updates since then. We got all the CEO stuff, uh, the finance and felony, a ton of new adversary modes, all the stunt races and the uh, the CEO and the biker businesses. But heists will still get you a massive amount of money. If you have a group of four friends, you and three others, you can really easily just blast through heists, like the Pacific Standard, blasting through the set of missions, getting onto the final heist, doing the doing the Karuma strategy when it actually comes to the final heist, keeping all of that 1.25 million. That's a lot of money for everyone, and it's definitely still a solid way to make a lot of money, uh, especially when you're in a group of friends. It's never as reliable if you're playing it with randoms in public lobbies because people can die, people can quit, and it can really slow down the progress of you getting up to the uh, the, the final heist where you actually really get the big money. I really, really wish that heist would be improved a little bit so there was uh, maybe a steeper penalty for actually quitting out during the heist mission or the final heist and also the fact that right now once you finish a setup mission pretty much all the players will be splitting off into their own free mode sessions it would be so much better if it just loaded up the next heist mission with the same group of players so you could really really speed through all the missions and it would just make the process 10 times easier less people would actually be quitting out and it would just be a much better system for actually playing through the heist so uh, there's heist, it's still a great way to make money, probably the best way, I remember when uh, every heist was like double money for a week and everyone was just grinding the heist out and making a ton of cash, um, so yeah don't forget about heist guys. Now next up we've got premium races, if you're pretty confident that you can win a premium race almost every time you load it up, you're going to be getting 80k profit every time if you come first, and you can actually do one. Uh, once every about 45 minutes so you can't really grind it like some of the other stuff you used to be able to farm it like I did a video uh, not long ago where you could just load up another premium race as soon as you did one and still get 80k each time for finishing first but Rockstar patched that you can't uh, do that anymore which is a uh, which is really unfortunate it was something pretty decent to do uh, so you can't really farm it anymore it's just something to kind of do in between doing the other stuff again just giving yourself a bit of variety different stuff to do so if you feel like you can do premium races and win them almost every time, it's definitely going to make you some good cash as well. Um, less so the normal stunt races and normal races. Like again, normal stunt races and races are good to do in between doing other stuff. But when you've got like big 16 player races and 30 player races, you've really got to be confident enough to be able to win. And only then are you going to start making good money. Because if you're just doing races and coming like 6th or 5th every race, then it's not going to be as good as doing some of the other stuff. But then again, the premium races and the normal races, it's definitely something that isn't to be underestimated in terms of how much money you can potentially make from them. And then finally, I just want to mention the weekly time trial that resets every Monday. You just get a quick 50k from this by doing it in a free month session. So every Monday when there's a new time trial up, they're really easy to do. You can complete pretty much all of them with a, with a Bati or a Hakuchu or a Shataro, whichever the fastest bike is that you find most comfortable with. A quick and easy 50k uh, for something that's just going to take you literally like two or three minutes to do. Definitely try and remember to do the time trial every week. And if you've got a second character, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to do this again on a second character and get another 50k for it. I wish there were more stuff like this, you know, daily or weekly activities that you could re repeat on different characters to still get the same amount of money. I think that would be something that's pretty good just to make it worthwhile having a second character because I only really play on one character on each platform. I've never really felt the need to create a second character so I wish there was just uh, more stuff that you could do on like a weekly basis with uh, the different characters like your second character and stuff like that. So yeah, don't forget about the time trial but again, just in general, something to take away from this video. There's not one single way that you can uh, just do over and over again to make a ton of money in the game. Just play the game normally, play through all the different stuff and you really shouldn't have a problem with making money in GTA Online. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully that just puts the question to bed now. If anyone ever asks me again, what's the best way to make money in GTA Online, I'll probably just link them to this video because I feel like this video should be the best answer to that question. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What is your favorite or what do you think is the best way to make money in GTA Online? YouTube has been acting really weird lately. Loads of people have been complaining that the site's broken, videos aren't really showing up. I haven't really noticed too much of an effect on my channel recently, but I haven't really been uploading that regularly uh, recently anyway. But if you do want to make sure that you never miss a video of mine, you can enable YouTube notifications, uh, or you can also follow me on Twitter as well. I'm pretty much always active on Twitter. 
I usually always tweet when I'm making a video and then it always tweets out when that video goes live. So yeah, enable YouTube notifications or follow me on Twitter if you never ever want to miss a video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like rating, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll hopefully see you all in my next video. See you later guys.